Okay, let me share something that I have been thinking about lately. Image this. What, in your life, what if God were enough? Like God were enough for you. In, in, your, in everything. Like the way you treat others. Oh, in school or at work. In your romance. In your money woes. All the things of your life. What if God were enough? What would be different for you? I mean, would you still feel so burdened about all that stuff going on at work? Would you still feel so angry about that, that bad thing that happened or that loss you experienced? Would you still feel so lonely like you don't have any close friends? What if God were enough? So let me give you an example. <clears throat> I want you to think of a person in your life, a person living, who you do not get along with for whatever reason. Whether it's family member or neighbor, whatever it is, okay? I want you to actually picture them in your mind, okay? It could be somebody that's your mortal enemy or just somebody, I don't know, we just don't see eye to eye, okay? You got somebody? Okay, start there. So, thinking of them, and let me get this straight, we'll all agree that person is probably a jerk, okay? We got that, okay? They're probably so mean, okay? We got that. And they're just out to get you, we got that, okay? And it's really tough, especially when they don't ask for forgiveness after that big thing they did to you. And it really hurts sometimes when they're not even aware how much they hurt you. Oh. Okay, still thinking that. What do we do with them? Well, it's real easy to try to bring them down. You know, we gossip about them. We look for any character flaws, we want to bring it out, or we just ignore them. We just avoid them and say, I'm not going to talk to them, I'm not going to look at them. In a sense, we do what a lot of people have done, is we want to get back at them. And sure, there's a biblical notion for that. It's from Exodus chapter 21. It says, eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Which means if they hurt you, you hurt them. But then what does Jesus say about that? He just heard it. Jesus says, if somebody hurts you, don't hurt them back. Or his way of saying it, if somebody slaps you on the one cheek, what you ouch, that hurts. What you do is you turn the cheek and say, okay, get this one now also. Slap this one. Jesus says to be a follower of his, we got to be different than other people. I mean, most often we do that. We got to get them back. We got to be fair. It's only just. And even you who call yourself Christian, when you want to harm somebody, Jesus is saying, you don't be a follower. Or when a, a family is so angry at another family. Or even as a country, when we call ourselves a Christian country, and yet we want to get back at somebody. I don't know if Jesus would say, no, you're not doing it. Because there's got to be a different way of treating those people we don't get along with. So here's what works for me. When I think of someone who has harmed me, what I try to do with them is pray for them. And not pray that they dear God, I want you to change her, make sure she thinks just like me, or dear God, I want you to make him realize how awful he is, <coughs> and him come begging back for my, no, none of that. <laughs> what I'll do is pray for them to say, dear God, I hope she has a better day. Dear God, I hope he is eating his vegetables. You got enough sleep. I hope he's in a good space. Dear God, I pray that whatever's going on in his or her life, the stress or the worry, that I'm going to let go and just get things set up. And here's the, here's the good part. And then trust God that 
you are enough. Wow. As opposed to me trying to fix them or trying to change them or trying to argue with them or trying to tell them how bad they are, is to pray that goodness happens. It's just like Jesus said, pray for your enemies. Think well of them. And then trust that God will be enough for them. Now, now, I'm not talking about goofy God will be enough. You know, like if somebody's, like, sick, and then you say, oh, God, you just heal me. It's like, no, no, if you're sick, you go to a doctor, and then let God heal you through the doctor. Got it? So I'm not talking about goofy God is enough, but I'm saying this, this affects every part of our lives where God is enough. For example, let's say those of you who have some financial woes. Well, you just heard Jesus say, if you do... Give, and it's going to come back to you. If you've got financial woes, give, and things will be okay. In, in church language, we call that tithing. Now, Catholics typically are the worst givers. I don't know if you know that from any other religion. We're tight. We give because it's like tipping. Oh, I like the homily, so I'll give a lot of money. Or we give because we get a tax refund. And Jesus would say, no, that's not why you give. You give so that God can work in your life. You give so that you trust that God is enough. You just heard it. Jesus says, it will come <laughs> back to you. Good measure, packed down, shaken down, overflowing will come into your life. When you give. <clears throat> okay, think of a relationship you have. Think of... Think of things that are not going well. When you can start being different toward that person and trust that God is enough, it's like, okay, God will work on this relationship. If you feel lonely, you feel like, oh, I'm not sure where my life is going, and I'm not sure how I'm going to get through things, imagine if God were enough to say, I'll take care of you. I'm going to be there. Because many times we get stuck, we, get, we do that activity, or we, we do that thing that we know is not healthy. Instead, turn it around and say, God, you'll be enough. You just heard Jesus say, you got to start, you got to be different. You got to stop judging. You got to stop condemning. You got to start forgiving. Now, Lent is coming up. I don't know if you know that. It's actually comes in two weeks, so it's a week from this Wednesday. And for a lot of us, what we do for Lent is we give up things, which I think is, is fine. That's cute. But many times, you give up something that you should have been giving up anyway. Like, I'm going to not do snacks at night, or I'm going to give up all that alcohol. Well, I say, start tonight. Don't wait until Lent. If it's bad for you, do it now. Got it? But what you could do, and here's your challenge, when you think about Lent, try this. Oh, by the way, you give up something <laughs> to make room for God. Okay? You don't give it up to lose weight or it's bad for you. You give it up so that God can fill you. So God is enough. But try this. It's a challenge. For Lent this year, try focusing on one area of your life, whatever it is, Work or relationships or money or loneliness, whatever you, you pick it. And then live the 40 days, 40 plus days of Lent as if God is enough. Instead of you worrying so much about that job thing, or you being so overwhelmed about that person, or you having all this stress about money or whatever it is, <coughs> change it around like Jesus talks about. And actually start trusting. And imagine that, God, if you were enough with this thing, how do I respond? How do I live? How am I going to be? Because I find that for people who really trust that God is enough, it really leads to joy. It really leads to this kind of contentment. And you can judge for yourself if you don't have a lot of joy right now. If you only feel like you're worried all the time. 
Maybe this is the Lent to change things. And let God be enough.